Thank you, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be with you virtually. Uh, my only regret is that we're not there in person. Uh, last year, when I was able to join you in person in Dallas, it was just such a pleasure to get to know um, uh, new friends from around the world. And I especially um, want to give a thank you to Manisha and to Chantel. I wish I was there with you. Um, Manisha and I had a chance to reconnect um, mid-year, which was really special. So I hope that I get to see all of you in person again soon. Um, great to be with you. I'm talking about advocacy today. A little bit about advocacy, your role as an individual and how you can advocate and also your role um, advocating for your business in particular and talking about challenges and opportunities that you have along those lines. Uh, as was mentioned, I've been uh, the president of my own small business for 25 years, uh, Amplify Strategies, and then I get hired to help businesses and organizations actually advocate for themselves. So I've got a lot of experience in the advocacy world and started advocating for issues back when I was a teenager and um, advocated on issues that I cared about and kind of got hooked and felt like it was a great way to use my voice to help um, bring about change on issues that I believed in in particular. So um, really enjoy that. I also am now the president of a group called Colorado Business Roundtable, which represents some of the country's larger employers, uh, and in particular employers that do business in Colorado. So as we're finding people across um, the globe and across the US, I wanna say greetings as well from Colorado. And if you're ever in this neck of the woods, feel free to give me a, give me a shout. Um, let's see. So Talking a little bit about advocacy, uh, first I wanted to talk about challenges that we're faced with in terms of our businesses. And we're all gonna have to think a little bit differently because you're gonna be facing different challenges than perhaps my business is faced with or the organizations that I work with. But I think there are a lot of things that are really similar. So as we go through this, hopefully you can apply them to what challenges you're facing with your business. Um, what we've found uh, it, uh, the political challenges to businesses aren't isolated cases. Rather, they've spread to all levels of government and within communities. And really, the reason we have challenges is they um, threaten to some degree our ability to start businesses, launch them, grow them. And so anything that is a hurdle for your ability to grow and thrive as a business, I would say you could put in that bucket of challenges. And that's where advocacy becomes so important. When I think of challenges that I face um, with my business or my clients, um, there's lots of different levels. So there's local challenges, um, you know, just in the community that I'm living or working in. Um, we've got a lot of state challenges in Colorado, and then I've got a level of federal challenges as well. So lots of different threats that come to um, cause problems for my, for my businesses or my clients. Uh, we look at things like tax structure, um, how much money we're able to keep for ourselves from the different entities, um, our ability to hire employees, our ability to grow. And it could be everything from zoning issues to other things that come in and provide that restriction on what we wanna do on the business side. So one of the, uh, the organization that I currently lead, Colorado Business Roundtable, and it's easy to find online, um, we actually are an advocacy organization and we fight against um, anything that would be sort of an anti-business stance, whether it's um, a law or a regulation or even just public opinion. We try to promote how a business, um, a business and the business community should be given the right to thrive and grow because our belief is what's good for business ultimately is really good for people. Because if a business thrives, it's so interconnected. Um, they're able to have more supply chain opportunities. They're able to hire workers. They're able to invest in the community. And it's that interconnectivity that can make a community really strong. So if you look at our website as one example, that's one way that we do a lot of advocacy around issues related to business, not just in Colorado, but also federally and some international issues as well. Our group has worked on some trade issues in particular that I find um, really interesting as the world, as you all know, the world gets smaller all the time and uh, many, many employers rely on 
international trade to be successful. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about some of those challenges. Um, and I'd love for you all to think through what are the challenges that really affect you day to day and you know, maybe make a list. And then as we go through opportunities, how can you shift to think about what are some ways that you can advocate related to those challenges and think about ways that you can make a difference through your business and through your individual voice? So thinking about opportunities, um, when I would work with an organization or for my own business, I would actually come up with an engagement strategy to implement that combines public affairs, which I'll go into that in a few minutes, coalition building, community involvement, and a proactive campaign within key stakeholders. And that's a lot, and I'm happy to give slides as well if that's helpful um, to some of those things regarding how do you look at opportunities when you think about advocacy. So let's start with uh, a public affairs strategy, um, which is a little bit about um, kind of what I think Bobby referenced, a little bit about finding your why. If you know why you're in business, then it's easier to help think about the opportunities and how you're gonna communicate those to people who matter in, in terms of an advocacy strategy. So public affairs, work combines government relations, media communications, issue management, corporate and social responsibility, information dissemination, and strategic communications. So that's a lot, but I would say that the real uh, simplified version of public affairs is really just knowing your why and being able to communicate that really well. And it aligns with your mission, it builds trust and authenticity, and it also creates opportunity. One author that I really appreciate, if you haven't had a chance to read him yet, is Simon Sinek, who actually wrote a book called, um, you know, What's Your Why? or Find Your Why. And it really delves to a deeper purpose of why, you're, why uh, your business is um, in operation. And this can be applied personally as well. I've actually read both of the books, one about me personally, what's my why, my mission as an individual. And then the flip side is what's the why for your organization. And it can be a really wonderful way to start when you think about what kind of advocacy you want to plan. And here's a quote by Simon Sinek. It is one of life's greatest joys to wake up in the morning, every morning, with a clear sense of why that day matters why every day matters. This is what it means to find your why. This is the start of an inspiring journey, your inspiring journey. So I think what's fun is this takes a little bit of contemplation to understand why you want to do what you do. And I'll give you an example from my own life. And I, when I met Dr. Terry Neese, this is why I wanted to get involved in this organization as well. One of my deep whys and what's a thread for me in my advocacy work is actually the empowerment of women, knowing that if they have economic opportunity and more uh, economic flexibility, um, the ability to control their own destiny, um, that makes me super happy because that's something I feel really strongly about for myself personally. And I want to help encourage other women to have that same opportunity that I've been given. So that's one of the reasons I do some of the work I do on advocacy, because I think um, economic opportunity, um, whether you're a man or a woman, is just so vitally important. So what's your why? Uh, I actually did some consulting for the oil and gas industry for quite some time, and it was interesting for them. Their why wasn't to just produce oil and gas. It was things like, uh, we want to provide accessible energy for the poor. We want to heat homes. We want to provide um, transportation opportunities for people. There was a much deeper why for them. Your why might be when you're thinking about um, providing food and drinks for the community, uh, access to high quality childcare, uh, creating fashion designs to make people feel good about themselves. There could be lots of really interesting whys for why you do what you do. And that's some, it's some really fun work to get into. But I think that helps frame a little bit of your advocacy because it's less about your business and more about your why. So I'm going to flip uh, real quick and talk a little bit about stakeholder engagement. And this is so important. And I think um, 
Manisha has been such an interesting uh, example of this with her also building, of course, the first women's chamber of commerce and industry in Afghanistan. She's such an incredible ally uh, to women in Afghanistan. And she understands the value of bringing in other stakeholders. So when I work with people regarding advocacy, I think about who do I want to be my allies? I want neighbors that are part of the mix. Um, it could be elected officials that I want to make sure they understand my business and they feel a sense of camaraderie with my purpose could be state and regional agencies as far as uh, that's what matters to me in Colorado. And then thinking through other influential leaders in the area that you want to make sure you've told your story to. Community leaders, um, business leaders and organizations, chambers of commerce, um, if there are particular media involved, and also potentially nonprofits or charities that might be interested in helping uh, promote your business. So when you think about stakeholders, it's a pretty wide group of, of people in the community, influential leaders that can be a part of helping you advocate. I'll give you uh, another example of something in my life. I was uh, with my children's school. All my kids now are grown and out of the house, which is just crazy to think about but I used to be on a board of directors for my children's school. And it was very, very important because of the way funding was received that we understood that we had stakeholders and they weren't just the parents or the likely um, people that we wanted to be involved in our school. We were very, very concerned about making sure we got the funding that we needed. So we put together an advocacy plan to make sure that we knew who the elected leaders were in the area. We knew who the business leaders were in the area who could support our school. And, and it kind of grew from there to make sure everyone was a part of that plan. And then for the school, we invited people to the school once or twice a year, gave them a tour. We had the children talk to them about what they were learning at the school. And we engaged with the media on those particular events and with the other elected officials. And it was really powerful because we built friends in advance. It wasn't when we had a problem, we wanted to make sure people were invested in our school uh, right away. Um, relating to coalition building too, I think you see some examples of that even with uh, the Institute for Educating and Empowering Women to some degree, I would, I would say that we're all a coalition and are able to help each other, um, not just on pressing issues today with your business, but once you've gone through this program, you've developed these relationships around, the around your own country and then around the globe as well, that's part of your coalition to help you be more successful. Uh, last, I would say advocacy involves a piece of education and thinking through how you educate people about you and your business can be vitally important. And we see this uh, in lots of great aspects. Um, one of the organizations I'm also involved with is a group called the Business Roundtable, which operates in Washington, DC. And they're very, very good, if you look at their Twitter account, very, very good at um, advocating and educating people on the role of business uh, around the globe. And they do a really good job of trying to bring people in um, from that educational standpoint. So uh, just to sum up, I wanted to just say that uh, I think advocacy is incredibly important. I've been involved as an advocate since, like I said, I was a teenager. And I think the root cause of why advocating is so important is it's um, such a privilege to be able to use your own voice. And you get to choose what you want to advocate for, of course, for your business, but there might be other things in the community that are important to you. And you can use your voice, your business and your influence to help um, provide change in whatever it is that's important to you. And bringing other people with you just adds that much more ability to facilitate change. So when we think through time for action, um, I, would, I would just encourage you to develop actually a plan and think about being metric driven. Think about what change you want to provide and how you're gonna measure that change. 
For example, if I were advocating for one of my businesses, it might be a particular tax rate that I want to change, or it might be that I want to bring in more partners um, that are financial partners, and all of those can be measured. And I would say too, one of the best ways on advocating is, is thinking about changing hearts and minds and how you can bring about um, some additional coalition and more um, camaraderie for your particular business. So um, in summary, I just wanna say, I am so thrilled again to be with you all today. I hope that you will take some of these tools and I'm happy to share my slides as well to help you come up with an advocacy plan not only for you, but for your business and to really take it to the next level. But thank you again for being with you all. And I hope I get to meet some of you in person sometime soon.